We are now uh, going to fit this uh, Stormeister club door, which is an inward opening. So we are now on the inside of the house here. Inward opening, low threshold, uh, which means for wheelchair access, uh, flood door. So the flood, we're inside the house, the flood comes from the outside. Now, in a normal situation, we will have a, an old door here to take out. So before we rush into anything, we need to make sure that the door that we have got will fit in the opening before we start taking the old door out. Because if we take the old door out and the new door is the wrong size, we're in a lot of trouble. So let's just measure, imagine there's an old door here. Let's just measure the old door, the width of it. Measure the new door, the width of it, and we're fine. We've got about 20 millimeters uh, to play with, so. Not a problem if the new door is a little bit narrower than the old door. It is a problem if the new door is wider. Obviously it won't fit in the hole. So, uh, now we've uh, established that the, uh, the new door will fit where the old door is coming out of. We now need to make sure that we have all the uh, tools that we need. And if you refer to the, uh, uh, the written manual, uh, you'll have a list there of the tools that you'll need to carry out the task. So, just to stress that it is important that before we launch into the operation of removing the old door and putting in the new door, we make sure that everything is there that we need. We make sure that the new door is of a size that will fit and also that it's of a type that will fit, that it's hinged on the correct side. So we make sure of all that before we remove the old door. When we remove the old door, and obviously we've already done that here, when we remove the old door, we then have to make sure that the, where we're going to fit the new door, and obviously all the way around, if this is a real situation, we've got to make sure we have a nice, clean, firm surface to fit up the sides, across the top, and along the bottom. No loose masonry, no way that the water can get through, the flood water. We make sure that the walls are sound, the floor is sound where we're going to fit it to. If it's not, then before we fit the new door, we have to get some uh, mortar mix, sand and cement with a waterproofer and a plasticizer and make, make the sides and the floor and the above good before we put the new door in. Now, the new door, uh, this flood door, fully reinforced with box steel, so it's very heavy. So in order to facilitate uh, the fitting of the new door, what we would normally do is take the opening sash, this has been the opening sash, take the opening sash off, um, which we'll do now. Chris, if you just give me a hand, will you please? We'll take the, uh, okay, we'll just take that off. So we just open the door and lift off the sash. There you go, we just take it over there out of the way, please. You see, when we took that off, the hinge pins have come out, so I'll we'll put them back in. Ready for when we're lifting the door back on the Okay. Now we've already established that this new door, door frame now, will fit where the old door has come out of. So, Chris, if you can just give me a hand, please. Okay. Now this is an inward opener, so the hinges are on the inside, so we're now on the inside, I'm on the inside of the house, Chris is on the outside of the house. So what we're going to do, we're going to sit the door in like that, 
make sure it fits. We're going to decide where we will position the new door. So let's position the new door. We're lucky we've got a bit of a lip to position it against. So can we take it towards that lip? Okay. Right. So if you hold that door uh, steady, Chris, you can see here it's uh, really a two-man operation. Uh, because whilst Chris is holding this, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mark where the door is. When we're fitting a flood door, when we're fitting a flood door, we need to make absolutely certain that the door is sealed in properly. When we're fitting a normal door, what we would do, we put some sealant along the bottom there. Our normal door, all we're concerned about is rainwater falling from the sky. Flood water is entirely different to rainwater. Flood water comes up, rainwater goes down. So putting a seal across there is no good for a flood door because the flood water would just lift the seal off. So what we're going to do now, we've got the door in position, so I'm going to mark with a pencil where the door is. Okay, we would also mark the outside of the door, remember Chris is standing outside the house, so I'm inside the house, also mark the outside, but we're lucky because we have a lip to sit the door against. But if we don't have that lip, then we mark the outside with a pencil. The reason for that is we're now going to lift the door frame away. If we lift it into the, uh, into the tank, please Chris, lift it in. see now is that uh, because we've marked where the door is going to sit we can now put sealants in uh, on the outside of the door here we can put sealants in we can put sealants on the inside the outside being the crucial one we don't want water to get me on the outside but we have a second line of defense here on the inside so what we're going to do now is put sealant around where the uh, door is going to sit. When the door is sitting on the sealant, obviously then the flood water can't lift the sealant away. Okay, now we're going to start to put the sealant in and we always start in the corner. Because the corners are where the, uh, the unwary always miss. So we start in the corners and work away from the corner. You can see we have a nice thick bead there. Okay, start in the corner, work away from the corner. Okay, now we go back to this corner, start in the corner, make sure there's plenty goes in the corner. We can never put too much in the corner. Okay, we're going across. And what we're going to do here, we're going to go to the middle and then we're going to start off at the opposite corner. Okay, to the middle, Chris. And then you're going to start off at the corner. Okay. So we're always making sure that we get plenty in the corners. Because the corners are where most people go wrong. You don't put enough in the corners, or even completely miss the corners. Okay. What I want you to do here as well, I want you to come across there. Yeah, come across there between the two beads. Okay, and then I want you to do the same all the way across, going to the middle, start at the other corner, come across, and then up the sides. 
Uh, we've got sealants uh, outside of the door, inside the door. And now what we're going to do, we're going to put the frame onto the sealant, if you will please, Chris. Steady hand, come on, come on. There you go. See how the sealant squeezing out here in the corner? Here, here. Okay. So if you get your level, Chris, you've got to make sure that the uh, door frame is absolutely vertical absolutely level across the bottom level the bottom off before you start fitting it which is something I forgot to do because I, I obviously know that this is level but if you're doing one at home then make sure you know, the, the, the bottom where the door is going to sit is level okay are we right? So, yeah. All right. Okay, let's wedge this into position. You see, if we're doing this in a real situation, then we have a lot more wall to do it. Well, that's two. Okay, other side, other side as well. Okay. Okay, right. so what we've done now, and obviously if you have a normal situation where you've got walls all the way up, you can wedge it, I'd usually wedge it top and towards the bottom, not where all the sealant is, but okay, so can we just check now that the uh, frame is perfectly vertical? Spending some time on this. This side. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. It's somewhat more difficult for us because we haven't got full wall all the way around. Okay. But having got the frame in and having got it vertical level across the bottom we've got the short level we've cheated here because we already know that this is level at the bottom but in a real situation you make sure that the bottom where the door is going to sit is level before you put the door in so what we're going to do now we now have to uh, start drilling into the uh, door frame and remember this is fully reinforced with uh, box steel we're going to start drilling in and making a hole and then putting the fixing screws through but if we're doing that what we probably would do we're going to knock the door out of vertical so in order that that doesn't happen what we're going to do now and what I recommend you do at home is put some foam filler in not all the way down we just put a couple and if you're doing this at home just put a couple in okay so what we're going to do now we're going to tack this with foam filler so if you put some in there obviously in the in your real situation you've got loads and loads more wall to go up than we have is that one in there yeah yeah so I want you to tack it there as well and tack it just down there okay we've got enough in there yet yeah okay, okay. 
Now what this will do when the uh, foam filler has, uh, has solidified that's going to hold the uh, door frame steady and then we can start drilling holes into it and putting fixing screws in. So what we're going to do now uh, we're going to go and have a coffee and a sandwich and then we're going to come back to it. Ok, right, so what we've done now, we've uh, made the door nice and steady so that we can start drilling into the door. This really is essential because if we haven't made the door steady, when we're drilling we're going to be pulling up the door and uh, pulling it out of, uh, out of vertical. So we need to have the door uh, nice and steady, or almost steady, we're almost steady there. Um, so what we're going to do first of all, um, we're going to pre-drill the holes for the fixing, uh, fixing screws. Uh, we're pre-drilling because this uh, outer frame is reinforced with box steel. So we can't get a masonry drill through that. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with a uh, metal drill bit. Um, we're going to start 150 mil, 6 inches from the bottom, on this side. So, and normally what you would do, uh, then about every four, 400 uh, mil, uh, about every 18 inches, you put a fixer. But as we're uh, a bit short of uh, wall space here, we haven't got a full height wall, we've only got this little wall. So what we're going to do, we're going to do 6 inches, 150mm from the bottom, and then two more at whatever spacing. But what we've done, we've drilled holes in a flood door, um, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but we have to do it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put the fixing screws in, but we've got to do two things. Firstly, uh, we need to uh, ensure that when we tighten the screws, uh, it's not going to distort the frame. So wherever we're going to put a uh, fixing screw, we just put a packer behind, just to make sure that we're not going to pull the frame out of shape. Okay. Uh, when we finish what we're doing with putting screws in, we can actually pull these packers out, because what we're going to do then is, is, is uh, finish this off with sealant. Okay, so we've drilled holes in the frame, so we've got to make sure that um, uh, water isn't going, to, uh, isn't going to come through these holes. So what we do, we put sealant around the neck, I've got some wet sealant on my finger here, but we put sealant around the neck of the fixing screw, so that when we put it into the hole, um, it will then seal so that water can't, if water does happen to get into the frame, which it shouldn't really do, but uh, if perchance it does happen to get into the frame, it can't come through the hole because we've sealed the hole. Oh, what we've done now, we've put in the fixing screws, we've sealed round the neck the fixing screw uh, so that water can't come out if water does happen to get into the frame. Uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to pull the, uh, the packers that we've used here, we're going to pull these out, because they've done their job now. Um, we pull them out, the frame isn't going to move. The reason we're pulling them out, if we can get them out, is uh, we're now going to, after we've done that, we're going to then uh, pump sealant in, uh, the gap between the wall and the, uh, and the door frame. Okay. We've already got plenty around the bottom. Uh, I've already explained the, uh, the weak point or the bit that people tend to miss is in the corners at the bottom. So we've, we've put plenty in there, uh, so that won't leak. So what we've got to do now is come up the sides. So in order to do that, we're gonna pull these packers out because uh, they're, they're, they're no longer of any use. Uh, and also they're a, they're a source of leakage if we don't get it sealed properly. So then we're going to seal up uh, outside, outside, inside, uh, just make sure 
we're okay across the bottom. I think this this, this door is black on the outside, so we're going to use black sealants on the outside, white on the inside. Going to get it absolutely uh, so no water can get around the sides of the door. That's most important. Then what we're going to do, we're going to lift the door back on. Now, perhaps I should have mentioned this before, but we need to ensure that we have sufficient space at the top. Now we have sufficient space at the top if we have the, uh, all of the uh, door frame exposed. That means we've got sufficient uh, space at the top to lift the door on, pop it back down on the hinges. So you need to make sure of that. Door back on the hinges. Now you notice there the door isn't exactly easy to close. The reason for that is we haven't put the glazing in yet. Now we put the glazing in, uh, it's most important that this is done correctly, in what we call heel and toe, as on the boot, the heel and the toe. So the heel is where we put the weight of the glass. Because the door and the glass combined are very heavy. And what tends to happen, or what in fact does happen, is the door will drop on the handle side. So what we have to do, and you can see here, the door isn't closing very easily, uh, purely because of the weight of the door. So when we're putting glass in, obviously we're adding more weight. So we've got to compensate for that. Now that we do by, as I say, heel and toe. The heel being here, in fact on, on, on this uh, split door we have two heels. We have a heel there and a heel there. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the glass in here with the weight of the glass on here. Okay. Now the toe is up here. If we didn't put anything up here, the glass would tend to drop anyway. So we have the heel and the toe. So the toe keeps the glass erect. Now also what we can do when we heel and toe, we can jack the door frame up on the glass. So the weight of the glass and the door is all transferred diagonally because of the mechanics of it onto the heel. Okay. So with two heels, one in the top unit here, one in the bottom unit. If we have a door that is just one complete glass unit, obviously we only have one heel. But the purpose of the heel and toe, and this is most important, the purpose of the heel and toe is to transfer the weight of the glass and of the door sash, which we do by levering up on that, to transfer all of the weight onto the hinge side. If we do that successfully, we'll never have any problems with the door. If it's not done properly, the door will tend to drop. Now, the glazing is absolutely essential. So the first um, stage of glazing would be to take these glazing beads out. Um, now, these are put in in the factory and the dimension of that one might be slightly different to the dimension of that one. Okay. Similarly, the dimension of that one might be slightly different to the dimension of that one. So what we're going to do with a pencil, we're just going to mark one, two, three, four. Okay. We're moving sealed units about, glass sealed units, do not put them down on concrete because that will damage them. Okay? So if we've got to put them down to rest them, then we put some cardboard or whatever down, put them down gently, and lean them against something that's not, not brickwork. Uh, this is just plasterboard, so that's not a problem there. 
I'll leave that up. We'll get the top unit. Put them like this because I'm going to do the top unit first. Now the correct way of doing it is actually to do the bottom unit first. But due to my advancing years, uh, it's a lot easier for me to demonstrate on the top unit. So, if you're doing this at home, and uh, you're not uh, as elderly as I am, then start off with the bottom unit. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'll just show you now how heel and toe works. We'll put... These packers in as the heel, and the glass unit is, is slightly narrower than the door, so we've got about 10 mil to play with. So we'll put these here. When we're actually going to put the glass in, we're going to stick these in. But I just want to show you the principle of the heel and so on. Okay. So when we're actually going to do it, we'll actually we'll stick those in. I'll just show you the principle of the alien swimming. Take the glass. Now the glass, uh, notice I'm not putting it down on concrete, I'm putting it down on my boot. Uh, the glass uh, is thermal uh, efficient glass, so it has to be a certain way around. Normally, we put it with a label on the inside of the house, but you must check that. Just check to make sure, uh, it will actually say on the label as it says here, but just check to make sure that you get the glass the correct way around. Normally it's labelled to the inside, but check that before you do it. Now healing and sewing, what I'm going to do is put this in. Okay. That is now on the heel. Okay. There we go. Alright. Now what's happened now, they've not, they've not put the toe in yet, the glass has fallen that way. Now I purposely didn't put the toe in, because now I have to put the glass back. In doing that, I'm absolutely sure that the weight is on the heel. Okay, because when we seal this unit in, as it's a flood door, we're going to seal this unit in all the way around. So we need to make sure that the weight is being carried on the heel and not on the seal. Okay, so that's how we put it in in a normal situation, let it fall over and then using a glazing paddle, not anything metallic, because if we use something metallic it's going to damage the glass. So then we Pull it over like that and put the toe in. Okay. Normally we stick this in and I'm just doing this uh, to show you what, what it's like. So I've, got, I've had to leave it like that because we've not stuck it in yet. Right, so we've now got the heel here. We've got the toe here. So the weight of that glass is entirely on here because nothing there carrying the weight. All the weight is on the heel. Okay, and we stop the glass kicking over by putting the toe there. Now, as I said before, this sash seems to drop slightly. So the way we would compensate for that would be we're going to jack it up a bit. So the way we do that is using the glazing paddle, not using something metallic because if we're using a screwdriver we're going to damage the glass or a chisel will damage the glass so we use this plastic glazing paddle. Okay. So we put that in and can you see how I can lift, lift the sash. Okay. See how it's lifting? So I just need to lift this by about 5 mil. So I then put these packers in here 
to keep the glass, to, to keep the sash roller in the correct, braced in the correct position. Okay. So now, not only is the weight of the glass on there, the weight of the sash is on there. So now we have a situation, we've not got to the bottom bit yet, but now we have a situation whereby the weight has been taken off this side of the door and transferred onto this side of the door. And as long as the weight is on the hinges, that door is not going to drop. Now as I said, the correct way of doing this will be to do the bottom unit first, but due to my elderly years, it's a lot easier for me to do the top unit. Now if we have two units in a door, or more than two units, the door might be divided into three or four, we must heel and sew each and every unit. If we don't heel and sew each and every unit, what we've done here will be cancelled out by what's done down here. So now what we must do is heel and sew the bottom as well as the top. Or if you're doing it the correct way around, you do the bottom first.